Well, the YouTube Archie here with another episode of the series of videos I have of finding Taj Not Bone. Uh, some videos I have it down as the Taj Not Bone story. <clears throat> and to update everybody, if you haven't seen these videos yet, series of videos that I've been doing due to the fact that this boy has been missing for 37 years. And, I mean, I if I could, I would search for every missing kid throughout the world, but, you know, time is a very bad essence for me. I ain't got much time to do shit, a lot of stuff going on in my life, but when I do get time, and I'm hoping to make this one day a full-time job in my videos on YouTube, because... You know, working for other people and businesses and stuff just literally sucks. <laughs> I feel I have a purpose of why I'm on this earth, and I think that I should be doing this type of work <clears throat> due to the fact that things that you read in the um, articles on the websites and a lot of stuff misplaced, missed, you know spoken of and it's just disgusting and sometimes when the story is not right I like to try and make it right and I did a clean out a couple months back and I uh, happened to get myself a little pot of gold of some old newspapers and history to me is very valuable in life whether people think of it and like it or not I know I do. And this history goes back dated to March 31st, which would be the anniversary <clears throat> of this story, 1987. It's the uh, Sentinel Enterprise. I just took this and cut it out for my records. Volume 148, newspaper 85. And <clears throat> due to my contribution to this missing case and I mean like I said I I have tried searching for other people like Jeremiah Oliver and if anything else I can come up for missing persons I will do it and there's actually a uh, another story I'm doing I just need to get out the swamp Scott and there's a missing boy out there like 15 years old 14 years old and he was a uh, what was his name? Henry Bernard, I believe. I think I'm saying his first name wrong, but I gotta look that up. His Bernard is his last name. And that kid ended up getting killed with his head bashed in on uh, <clears throat> Swamp Scott back in 1977. So, <clears throat> I mean, <clears throat> murder was never solved. Just like this murder was never solved. And I mean, the reason why I did take an interest in this story is because I had a brief encounter with this kid, <laughs> Mr. Taj Narbonne. <clears throat> and it was in, uh, happened to be in Lemonster, probably in the 79, 1980 <clears throat> times, just before the year he miss, ended up missing in 1981. Due to the fact my parents used to go to 135 Mechanic Street to a couple Canadian people they used to visit. And, uh, it has now since been changed into, the house has been changed into a hair salon. <laughs> as funny as that looks, knowing I used to run around in that house and play with their son and daughter. And, <clears throat> and uh, and sometimes I'd get bored and there would be nothing to do and I'd just head out the door and just wander to the park. And I think it was there or, it's, it's very vague because of the, uh, <clears throat> Because I never thought I would, uh, you know, be hanging around with this kid. But if I would have kept going to this house to visit, which they happened to end up moving. And then my parents started getting into their own, you know, bad relationship, splitting up. <clears throat> but, it, you know, it turned out to be a mess. And during the split up, I took on my own, you know closed closet door case type thing to shut out the 
you know, the bullshit around me of what was happening. But I, I, I could have, I, you know, I ended up moving to Lemonster with my father. The split up in 1982. So there, once again, I was wandering the streets. And I would have ended up being probably this fr kid's friend if we would have met up again like we did in the, you know, the past. So that's why I took it upon myself to do this. And things that have happened in between. <clears throat> you know, since <clears throat> 1982. <clears throat> Damn it. <clears throat> Excuse me. When I had uh, took in a carton of milk. Not for all you youngins that don't know what a carton of milk is. It's a uh, half a gallon of milk in a cardboard box. And this actually speaks of it in the article here. Stating how they are still treating this seven years later as a runaway. And as you can see the title, my, I screwed up. I freaking taped over that. Made this thing crooked. But mother still waiting for son Taj to return. Which is now 37 years or 36 years or whatever it's been. And <laughs> he ain't coming back. He would have already have shown himself being a full-pledged adult unless that, <clears throat> unless he was that scared of Mr. Clarence Dean, the one who literally tortured the boy of calling him the White King, calling him, <clears throat> you know, names and beating him with a belt and just sick things back in the day that used to happen. And if this kid was that scared and <clears throat> that much of not wanting to show his face to this day, <clears throat> which I don't know why, because, hey, if he's at that point where he thinks he needs protection still from this guy, man, look me up. <laughs> I'll knock that old bastard out for you if you're that petrified, but I know for a fact this kid ain't alive. If he was, shit, I'd, I'd befriend him and help him out. If he needed, you know, if he was still alive from 81, which I believe he's dead. And there's some things I got to say that happened of sources I have. And I'm telling you. And it's, I think I'm getting closer maybe finding this kid and where he's at. But, you know, if I would have known him back in 82 and met up with him then. Yeah, I would have helped him. He could have come over to my house. Because my house, when I lived out there in Lemonster, was not even a mile away from his. And then at that, after my mother and father broke up, my father moved to another apartment in Lemonster. So if this kid was still alive, I would have ended up being, you know, not even five minutes away from his house from that. On Union Street, we lived 165, I believe. And it's like not even five, four minutes from Naples Street. About a four minute walk, you know. But me, I believe this kid is in Lincoln Woods. Lincoln Woods is the little park thing that you can walk through. It's a little trail that you can go through, and it's a summertime thing if you want to just take a little stroll around in a circle like area. And, uh, but the craziest thing happened to me in 2010. When I went homeless, that uh, I lived in the uh, Lemonster Motor Inn, and that is not even a mile away from Taj Narbonne's house. And if you go through the woods of Lincoln Woods and you walk straight on back, I mean, yeah, you come out from to the Legion that's out there. You come out to some houses and blah blah blah, but you walk straight on through. You're walking right into that motel. And when I stayed there in 2010, believe it or not, I don't care what you say, I even got a video of up about the circle and how far the motel is from the uh, house he lived in, and it's not too far. But I had three doors in the room I was staying in. No one else was sleeping or renting the rooms at the time, and there had been three various knocks on each door at different times, one at 12 at night, one at 6 in the evening, one at uh, 8 in the evening, all different days. And I swear to God, when all three knocks happened, I was out that door, the last three various knocks, and I was running around that building trying to find someone 
pranking me, whatever, freaking kids or something, or the manager was up my ass all the time there, the owner of the building, because they were trying to catch us with the snuck dog we had in, which was $10 a fucking week to have a dog in there, and uh, it was just all kinds of insane shit, but could it have been the knock of Taj Narbon looking for my help, because I'll tell you something right now, when I was eight years old, I had a dream of someone drowning just before I moved out of my house in 52 East Main Street in AMS. And go figure, I found out later on in 2013 that someone did drown in that pond behind my uh, backyard. And it was a mental patient that escaped from an AM mental hospital at the time. Ended up in the pond. I don't know if he was trying to go for a swim or blah, blah, blah. But I even got a hold of the secretary of the air police department that still to this day remembers that. And she wouldn't tell me no more. But all she said she would tell me. All she told me was she remembered it. That's all she could tell me. I think there's more to the case that can't be revealed, of course. Because you can't talk about young kids' rights, of course, but all in all, kid drowned and he was hell yelling for help in my dream before I moved out of that house. And I always took it as just maybe some dream, crazy dream I had. I never told nobody until 2013 and there you go. Could it have been this kid? So I just took it upon myself to try and help. And I did have a dream of him standing in the woods looking at me just confused. And that was before I had this phone call from a source. I can't say no names right now. I do have some stuff that goes on where people know things, but I can't say that right now, of course. But um, it's how I get around, you know. I know know things, and I get people to know things. And this person told me that they had talked to a psychic. And for people that don't believe in the psychics, think you're gonna believe now because there was there's a vision from the psychic's mind that Taj here is standing near a uh, farm fence now old farmer fences usually consist of two boards connecting to two posts Along, you know, the farm. That's how farm fence used to be made back in the day. Now, this fence is similar to a farm fence. I'm going to be taking pictures of it and putting it up on the web as soon as all the trees go down. And the leaves, I did try taking pictures of it once. But, of course, the leaves are filled in of it. And I'm going to do it again now that uh, fall is hit and everything's falling. But... This woman claims that she sees him standing at this fence, confused, just like my dream. Confused. Like, how the hell do I get over there to get home and he must not be able to pass that fence because his resting ground is in the dirt of Lincoln Woods. So, for anybody that don't believe in psychics, and this, and this fence runs along the road, and it used to be the fence, of course, that... Back in the day, they used to make these for the road so you don't drive off into the woods and blah, blah, blah. I don't know why they would use wood planks and stuff and (laughs) junk like that because that ain't going to stop a 10-ton car pretty much realistically 4,000-pound vehicle slamming into it at 40 miles an hour, you know. But it has been replaced and everything. But So, therefore, this article... All it talks about is how they just keep searching for a runaway. And it's sad. The head detective keeps in what have they been doing? And I'll just end it with this is a biz, uh, there's the Family Hope Foundation that's been doing helping with this back then. Among organization efforts have been advertisements run in radio commercials aired every day for one month mailing to police uh, runaway centers and 50,000 flyers, 10,000 posters distributed and it wasn't until 1992 I believe or whenever uh, Walmart opened up in Lemonster they had this 
article up on their wall. I forget what year. It might have been. I don't know how long. I forget how long that Walmart's been open. <laughs> but they had the. I think it was 95. That's what it was, maybe. But they had this article up on their board. But they, yeah, that, look how long the timeline goes. You know, you think after many, many years, and, and the mother even says it, after six years, it's time to wake up the reality, a realistic that she has that now he's not coming home. I mean, she has divorced Dean. She, too, though, why people don't think Dean did this is insane because he kidnapped her. And you look up Clarence Dean versus the Commonwealth and you see what he puts his mother through and you'll know damn well from that article if you read it that he killed this boy. Due to the fact that he stabbed his mother. He tried raping his mother. I mean they were separated at the time. But he he was a brainwasher. He could have freaking convinced you into anything. He convinced the people in the family. That he was going to make amends with the boy. And settle his differences. And stop treating him with bad behavior. And that's what he did. He stopped and he killed him. He got rid of him. <laughs> Because, oh, he ran away from me, so he ran away. He didn't want to listen to nobody no more. And even the letter to this day sounds like an adult written it. Um, I am going away because I don't want to live here anymore. I don't have to listen to anybody anymore. And to me, that, that don't sound like Taj. You could say a fucking thousand words. They're facing a picture. This boy was a soft-centered boy. He was afraid of the dark. And it's come out with like something cold-hearted like that. That it was in Taj. Clarence Dean was jealous because of this blue-eyed blonde boy and the relationship he had with his mother. That's how sick some people are. They get these freaking relationships with women. And they think they own them like a piece of meat and property. And that's what Clarence Dean thought of Annette. You're my property. You come to me. And you, all your boys in the way, he needs to get it. He, he treated it like it was a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship. What a sick prick. But I could go on and on about this, but I got to get out of here. And, and uh, it's just sick how this ended, though. I and mean, like I say, once I get going on my videos, man, and things start to blow up, this will be my full-time job. And I will be doing stuff like looking... I'm gonna get, I gotta get back in touch with Detective Abishon and see if he maybe wanna try some looking around in the woods like he said. Cause, uh, he said he was gonna do that, but it's gotta be at the right time of the day and the moisture of the ground's gotta be very soft and hopefully by spring he might wanna do something. And, uh, I'll help him out as much as I can and hopefully this vision from this, uh, psychic. You know, make them believe and get on it more, you know. But anyways, World of YouTube, once again, the story of Taj Naboom. And like I said, the gold mine of uh, history has opened up doors for me. I got a bunch of papers I got to go through, see what else I can find. But other than that, YouTube Nation, till the next video, many more to come. Out.